lockdown, but doesn't matter. Lockdown three means series three of the Hidden London Hangouts. My name's Alex. Happy New Year, 2021. A new year and loads more amazing places to go and visit. And today is one of those places. I don't do these alone. I've got three amazing people from the London Transport Museum to guide us through the tunnels of London and also make us laugh and teach us something as well. First of all, Happy New Year to Chris Nix. You are looking amazing today. You go for a job, <laughs> by the way. Uh, happy, <laughs> uh, why, why would I want any other job than this one? Happy New Year, Alex. And I got tired of appearing in Zoom meetings in T-shirts last year. I thought, New Year's resolution, let's do a suit for episode one. Do you know, there's so many lovely things in that shop that I can see. First of all, I'm very honoured that you put my Christmas present up in your studio. That is amazing. And also, did I notice a pocket watch chain on you? Which way is that swinging? You, I, 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 it's down towards my pocket where I keep my grandfather's Lovely. pocket watch. <laughs> nice. It's very, very beautiful. Lovely. Sydney Holloway, Happy New Year and welcome back. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Alex. Um, I'm not quite as well dressed as Chris Nix. Uh, uh, after the lockdown news yesterday, I've just been feeling like I need something cosy and sort of something that reminds me of home. So my grandmother knit this sweater for me. So I thought that would be quite nice. Um, lastly, I'm not auditioning for an extra part in Peaky Blinders as some others are here. Um, but uh, <laughs> OK, that's... That maybe not was as funny. Mildly <laughs> 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 cruel moment. I mean, there. Laura, it's all right. I, I thought Laura had got the part. <laughs> thanks ever so much for that. <laughs> like, and, wow. Uh, Laura, uh, thanks for the feedback, guys. I will just crawl back into the shell. It's all good. It's all good. Happy New Year and welcome back. And Laura Hilton Brown, mother of two. How's dry January going with the lockdown? <laughs> well, yeah. So, what are we on? Day five. And we're day two of homeschool and we're back in lockdown. So, yay. Um, yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a tough one. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that we have uh, this series to look forward to, to kind of lift the energy slightly because um, it's, it's tough, isn't it? But um, Chris is looking so dapper. And as uh, Siddy said, um, that in fact, is there a new season of Peaky Blinders as well this year? I don't well, know. Let's, let's make, make it here. Ooh. Yeah, I, I think well, I'm, to be honest, if there Laura, is, I'm excited about that as well. So, well, this is excellent. A lot of things to look forward to. And just to say, while Chris is dressed like that, he could be the headmaster of your virtual school to teach your kids, and this could be fantastic. Well, now, per attention, stop of, sniggering at the back. I am thinking <laughs> of roping the three of you in to do a module each because you have a wealth of knowledge between you. So I think it's only fair that you share this with the younger generation too. To be honest. Well, this is good because these Hidden London Hangouts are for everybody, whether you're six years old or 66 years old or 96 years old, enjoy it for what it is. It's uh, a chance for you to go out and see bits of London that we can't see at the moment because of the lockdown. Today, episode one of series three, we're going back to a location to show you something which is brand new. Um, up until now, um, I've never seen video footage of this place. Uh, we filmed it a while back and uh, we've kept it in the can because we thought there will come a time where we need to open the ring pull and please you guys because there's no good news and that's about now. So we are going to Piccadilly Circus. Now you've seen parts of Piccadilly Circus, the Piccadilly Line platforms and indeed all the little interconnecting tunnels off those platforms, but you've never seen the Bakerloo ones. So we're going on a bit of an explore with a video camera and we're going to show you all of that today. Um, Laura, first of all, it's really important to know the reason that you don't do tours of this particular bit of the station is because it's actually just impossible to get the public in there, isn't it? Yeah, you're right. You're right, Alex. I think um, Pic Piccadilly is such a phenomenal station and I always get a little bit nostalgic when we do uh, a hangout on a site where we would be if we could be doing and delivering Hidden London tours. So Piccadilly, I think, holds a little spot in each of our hearts for various reasons. Um, and there are sections of so much of the underground that we can't get into because of storage, um, because, you know, we just don't have access to those parts. So the tour takes us into the parts that we can go into. And I don't know if you remember from series one, well, we're now three, series one. Yep. We had um, lovely themes of modernization and expansion, adaption and the design and architecture. I mean, who, the, you know, the booking hall there and the, what I love is the, um, the links with 55 Broadway. It's so lovely, isn't it? It's a little bit heartwarming that. Um, and so I'm, I'm missing Piccadilly, but what I'm excited about today is we are going into some areas that I've not been into either. So we couldn't take the public there, 
um, and I've just not had a chance yet to go in there. I know one day you and uh, Chris and Siddy will take me down there, so I'm excited about that. Um, so I'm looking forward to these pictures and videos too, because I'm sure there's some very funny things that you've seen down there. It is fantastic. It is mind-blowing footage that you're going to see today. And all I will say is, Chris, there is no way you dress like you are today to go into the places that we went. Uh, no, you're absolutely right, Alex. You will see later how I dress when I go into places like that, and it's certainly not a nice suit. I, all I can say is Benny from Crossroads is the words that spring to mind as you went through it. <laughs> you, you choose your own sartorial uh, reference, yeah. Don't you worry, Miss Doyan, it's all going to be fine. Um, <laughs> the city won't know this city. One day I'll tell you about Crossroads, the old TV series off uh, British television. It was joyous. Uh, but city, you know, um, you, last time we did... Um, the Piccadilly episode, you talked about how the surface buildings had changed so much. And mm -hmm. we're just gonna very, very quickly look at that, aren't we? Yeah, um, so in the uh, first episode, there we go. We're doing a little bit of city slideshow here. Um, but you may remember from episode uh, nine of the first series, we talked about Piccadilly Circus. Now Piccadilly Circus opened on the Bakerloo and the Piccadilly lines um, in 1906. And it had that tip, they, it had that typical Leslie Green facade, but it just had a couple of um, couple of different ones. So they had three different entrances. So this one was the Haymarket entrance, and this is a lovely photo because it shows you um, the building before it got built on top of. So on top of that building. Uh, became the Haymarket Hotel, which was there for quite some time. I just think that's a really lovely photo that later on was quite, you know, significantly changed and, and readapted before it eventually got demolished. Um, thank you for that, Chris. It's very good zooming work. It's like um, a screensaver, and... isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> And um, we just noticed that very ornate entrance in there, which looks like something out of like, I don't know, Raiders of the Lost Ark or something, sort of very ominous kind of entry into what we presume was just the offices above the station. So uh, thank you. Ooh, I feel like nice. I'm about to go through that door. <laughs> <laughs> if you sit here long enough, you'll actually proceed through that door. Yeah, doesn't it have that weird kind of, I don't know, like, yeah, Raiders of the Lost Ark, I, kind of Mayan feel to it almost. I don't know. It just seems like um, very, yeah, kind of a door that seems to lead to nowhere. Maybe it did lead to somewhere. I like think, an Alex, if you, if you loiter there too long, uh, the notice tells you what will happen. It says loiterers will be treated as trespassers. I do. Oh, you know, yeah. What makes me laugh even more as well about that is that the advert for shoe leather. And if you ever see the episode <laughs> uh, nine of series one where we talked about Big Dilly Circus, you'll know that I had a tan that was very similar to Judith Chalmers. So there was a certain element of shoe leather going on there as well. But it was all beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> me and my lovely tans. I certainly don't feel like that right now. I could do with the yeah. sunshine right now. So um, what also... was interesting... Um, no, so yeah, really that's just a, I think it's a beautiful photo of, of the facade before it got all shoved underground into the beautiful, you know, heart of London station that we've got today, which we talked about in episode nine. Um, we've got another photo, I believe. Yeah, there we go. Um, that one. So here we've, we've gone inside the old ticket hall. And as you may remember from the first uh, episode we did on Piccadilly Circus, uh, the station was initially equipped with eight lifts. So four for the Piccadilly line, four for the Bakerloo line. And they were on uh, opposite kind of ends of, uh, of each other, kind of facing each other. So here we're actually looking at the lifts for the Bakerloo line, which is kind of the theme of what we're going to be covering today. We talked a lot about the Piccadilly line side of Piccadilly Circus. We didn't talk as much about what happened to the Bakerloo line side. So just there, if Chris will zoom, you'll see the departure points there. So you see this side for Watford. Wow. Is where the Bakerloo line used to go back in the day. No, and, incredible. Uh, you can you can get a wash and brush up for threepence. Well, I was going to say, Chris, given how you're dressed today, I think you spent the full nine old pence, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think as well, bonus points for noticing the in interlaced W on wash and brush up. Oh, very nice. I didn't see that. There we go. I love um, this so much. <laughs> this is genius. So you were saying, Sid, that you had you had eight lifts all uh, in a row, effectively, and um, and four went down to the or four for the Bakerloo, four for the Pick. Is that right? Yeah. So so they were facing each other. So you see the yeah. four there, and then literally on the left hand side of this photo would have been the ones for the Piccadilly line because the Piccadilly line is a lot deeper than the Bakerloo line. 
at Piccadilly Circus. So one is going to a certain depth and the other is going e even deeper. So you, you had to decide which, which yep. line you were going to use. But as we know from the first episode, um, the station became very, very crowded after the First World War. So they decided to completely remodel it, build the station that we now have today, which is the one which has the beautiful arcade, this kind of circular one, there you go, which was kind of the new poster child for modern uh, tube stations in London. Of course, and that was, the one that, um, that was the one that Laura was talking about earlier, wasn't it, Laura? You, this is the one you like. Yeah, I mean, it's just so grand, isn't it? And the use of materials here. And I think it was quite iconic at the time because they're a bit of a front runner in, in the design of this. Um, and yeah, this is where I was uh, alluding to the, the, the nod towards 55 Broadway as well. Um, and that you can tell those kind of architectural and design features are, are so similar there. Um, and I just think it's, it's kind of quite luxurious. It's, it's grand. And I think, you know, when you're traveling on the tube, what a lovely way to start your journey. Gorgeous, yeah. isn't it? Right. And do you know what's really uh -huh. funny about this photo, which you may not realise? You see those terrible moisture marks on the ceiling. Damn <laughs> Yeah, about to so this was a huge problem when they first opened the station, is that they hadn't quite worked out proper drainage, because, of course, it's just <laughs> underneath the road. So yeah, they had immense, like, damp problems for um for, for quite some time after it first opened in 1929 and 1928 sorry and uh they, at one point uh, somebody from from a, a newspaper called it a, a damp sea cave oh stalagmites <laughs> and stalactites and all manner of bits and pieces in between and so but he doesn't look like that now it looks absolutely stunning now and it's really been decorated beautifully um chris also um the frontage lasted the, the leslie green frontage lasted quite some time after this didn't it it did yeah just before i show you that though the um the, you can see on the right hand side there you've got the world clock uh on the on the that sort of map on the right hand side which we talked about in in episode nine but um, also in the background, though, you can see where the telephone kiosks were, which is now where the Frank Pitt Memorial is. So if you go there today and you're trying to place where that shot was taken, the uh, the map and the clock is still there uh, and the Frank Pitt Memorial is in the background. But, yeah, you're quite right. If you uh, uh, have a look at this one, here is uh, the Haymarket facade with the... Uh, hotel built above it uh, and that's surviving in I think it was 1932 wasn't it City? That's right. Yeah so we're, we're talking only you know four years or probably three and a bit after the new station underneath the circus opened um, but what is interesting and I actually hadn't properly clocked I don't know why um, is that the original entrances and that station building did survive. So the original one built in 1906. It's just that it was completely converted into a shopping arcade. And only uh, just if you look up on the right hand side where the um, Piccadilly Circus entrance was, right about there, there was a staircase. Oh, yep, yep. Oh, hello. Just there, you got, got it there. Right there was a staircase leading down into the subways that connect to the modern station today. So if you say used Piccadilly Circus, not that we're allowed, only essential no. travel, everyone. Um, <laughs> if you used Piccadilly Circus, if you, would try, if you were gonna go towards the Hard Rock Cafe, or is it Hard Rock there now? Is it Hard Rock or Planet Hollywood? Something like that. Um, you would come up and it's outside now, but at the time it was inside the old building so you could walk into an old Leslie Green building which had been converted into a shopping arcade. Wowzers and we should say by the way that uh, although this is all in episode nine of series one the reason that those entrances were closed and a whole new booking hall was open was because lifts were taken out and escalators replaced them in a really really cool almost cylindrical design underneath Piccadilly Circus but all that detail is in the companion episode, which is episode nine of series one. What's next, Chris? Look at well, that. Um, this entrance actually survived for a surprisingly long time. Siddy and I were chatting earlier and neither of us had really clocked just how late uh, this had survived. This is 1959 and the mm -hmm. entrance is still there. I mean, that station building, that whole facade survived until 1990, really, when it got demolished. And today there is a building on top of that which houses, um, I think, whichever what it, whichever what one establishment it is. Um, and it has a bit of a nod to Piccadilly Circus, you know, to the Leslie Green design. Um, but yeah, I just 
honestly, I, I always thought that shortly after 29, they would have shut all those buildings down, um, but uh, it, it appears they didn't. Incredible, isn't it, really? And um, before we get onto the brand new stuff, because we wanted to do this just as a little backstory, just to give you an idea of context. Um, Piccadilly Circus Bakerloo line platforms are very unique in that if you're traveling north from Charing Cross and you go to Piccadilly Circus in the front carriage of the train and you get off at that point, you can actually see the southbound platform, can't you, Chris? Look at that. Really, really unusual. I remember the, fir the first time I went to those platforms, um, I, I deliberately missed the first train that came through because I arrived on the platform as it came in. I thought, I've never seen a platform like that. I wanted to walk to the end just so I could see if I could look across and see the other one. Indeed, you can. It's really, really cool. Really, really cool. So a cool station. <clears throat> and at this point, this is where the story starts to get quite interesting because as we said earlier, this is the bit of the station that we can't take the public into, but we can go into because we wear hard hats and we know what we're doing and we know what, I don't know what I'm doing, but they know what they're doing and they take me into these amazing places. So here's where it starts. You've heard of Educating Rita, the film. Today, it's Educating Alex. Okay, well, there we go. We're inside in the secret spiral staircase. It's quite a big, severe locked door, isn't it, down to this spiral staircase? And this is the emergency exit for the station still, isn't it? That's right, yeah. So this was uh, this was built to help with construction of the, the new site, uh, and it's been left as an emergency spiral staircase. And of course, we know it's Piccadilly Circus because of the tiles. Yeah, if we just have a little look at this stuff, this is the uh, same kind of travertine that you see at 55 Broadway. Um, same quarry, uh, really rather beautiful stuff, uh, all honed and slightly shiny. If we just look that way, we can see the shine. Anyway, right. obviously Piccadilly, we need to get down there, don't yeah, we? Yeah, let's head. All right. And of course here the tiles change, don't they? Yeah, so we change from that travertine to these rather more functional white tiles. And they're quite standard white tiles, apart from the fact they're laid vertically rather than uh, more usual horizontal tiles. And do you think these are originals from the early 1900s when the station was open? They certainly have that age to yeah. them. There'd be no reason to really have replaced them. Uh, so yeah, I, I'd say so. so great, these, are, these are from the refurb in the 20s. Fabulous, fabulous. Okay, well, let's uh, let's head on down. Chris, can I ask you a question? You can. Why are the tiles in the spiral staircase uh, vertical rather than horizontal? Is it for any other reason than kind of aesthetics or? I don't know. Um, the that bit of the uh, the station was never really for public. It was only mm. an emergency exit. So the only reason you've got that travertine at the top is because you can see them from the main part of the station. You then get that next layer down, which are just to make it easier to keep the the wall clean. Um, and who knows? They might have put the apprentice on the job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Accidental. I, it's very odd to see tiles done like yeah. that. Um, I would guess and, maybe it was a bit of a rush job because that um, shaft was essentially the old construction shaft for the entire um, kind of everything that was below ground that had to be shifted. So maybe they were like, right, let's not fill in the shaft, let's use it and just whacked on some tiles. Here's another thought, which uh, I'd have to watch the clip again, but uh, I wonder if it's to do with the fact that the pitch of the stairs might correspond to, say, three courses of tiles, rather than you having to cut them and notch yes. them in. So it might be yeah. something like that. You know, you. In fact, I'm so sorry, by the way, whenever I see myself in one of the museum masks, I feel like I just have to put it back on. Um, I, my face, this is like a facial sauna, by the way, that goes on for the last nine months. It's incredible. Um, that was fascinating. I wonder whether some of that actually, Chris, is because it felt like a much narrower um, spiral staircase than normal. So I wonder whether, as you say, whether it's just easier to tile it vertical than have long panels creating almost like an, an octagon shape, I suppose. To me, that would seem like more of a sensible reason why you tile vertically than horizontally, even though it does look a bit weird. Yeah, never, never seen a, uh, anything documented about 
why that might be like that. It's probably one of those things that's too small a point to bother, but it, I think it's probably something to do with the practicality of spacing without having to cut them, is my guess. Well, beautiful stuff. And speaking of tiles, Laura, get yourself excited, lovely, because we're about to go into those secret tunnels that we can't take people into. And it is really quite a spectacle to see. There's one particular colour, Laura, that you're going to absolutely love. I absolutely guarantee it. You're going to totally fall in love with it. You might actually go off Aldwych because you've just seen this new colour. Oh, bold, Grundon, bold. <laughs> <laughs> Any bold. Um, right, Mr Nick. So so the tunnels we're going to go and explore now are largely the Bakerloo line ones. Uh, this is something which uh, Siddy spent an inordinate amount of her life uh, researching uh, when she was writing the chapter on it in this rather wonderful Hidden London book uh, a few years ago now. Um, but the first passageway we're going to show you is the one that comes up from the Bakerloo line platforms. And this one has been stripped bare and shows you why we can't use it on tours. <clears throat> Wowzers. Look, it, are they just Evan? I'm so sorry. I'm very excited by what I've just seen. Um, that wood on the left, is that a sleeper for the track? It sure yes. is. Ooh. Yeah. So that's like a proper storage area now. Yeah, it's just used by, I mean, we've we've talked about this in, in past episodes. A lot of these spaces, when they get disused or when they get dis, you know, that when passengers no longer use them, they get used for storage of all sorts of stuff um in this case sleepers and to know what that is in those containers moonshine it, it, it yeah. says on them if i just zoom you in a little bit it, it says on them this container must uh, must be used for damping down and mixing only clean water to be used so it's mm. just for when they're making up uh, the cement or the mortar for bedding in uh, sleepers and so on very good. Well done, you. And if you walk straight down in front of you, like to the end of that corridor, that will take you out onto the platform, won't it, on the Bakerloo line? It takes yeah. you out onto an undisclosed part of the platform, yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Well done, Chris. Well done, Chris. Forgive me. Um, OK, so that looks pretty cool, um, but it's quite grimy. And I think there must be there must be foot. In fact, I know there is because I was there when we did it. Um, there must be some cool pictures of tiles for Laura. There you go. Get in! Look I actually at that. just rubbed my hands together as well. And I'm, oh, look at those! What do you think of that colour blue, then, Law? Do you know what? Do you know what? What immediately strikes me about that little colour combination going on there is there's two things. One is like the you know the colour of the ocean can sometimes be really azure, so it's very it's like a mix of green and blue. So yeah. that's that's what mm. that immediately reminds me of. But it also reminds that that green is very um, like it's bright and it's sharp and um, it's uh, it's like the blue of the sky and the green of the grass that so kind of makes me think of that combination as well. Like, so a, that, like a field by the sea. It, yeah, so it gives me a very warm feeling. I like Does that it? colour combination a lot. You'd have yeah, loved it like down a, there because it's quite it's warm. Like, it looks like the ocean in like Fiji or something. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and you get that mix of green and blue. You're, you're, yeah. you're with me, Sid. A bit like your lovely jumper as well. Um, as, as ever, when you look closely, you've got this incredible mix of really, really light glaze through to quite dark. And it's that range of colours, which I think creates that almost sea-like effect, a bit like the old witch ones. Totally. Yes. And as we've said before, that, you know, that these colour schemes and also the tile patterns are unique to those stations. So that anyone who couldn't uh, read when the stations were open could still navigate their way around London by colour. I just think that these little bits and st of stuff that we've teased out during these series of the Hidden London Hangouts, just wonderful, absolutely wonderful. And look at that, Chris, you always talk about the marks that are left when tiles fall mm. off the wall. They're called keystones, aren't they? That's right. Yeah, if we just uh, zoom in at the top there, you can well, you're see. You're getting good at this, Chris. You've got I like it. it. <laughs> That's been good. Um, it's his other New Year's resolution. Yeah, he needs to make <laughs> more. He's oh my God, really he's not up. only dressing better for Zoom, he's also <laughs> Zooming better. He wants more money, Siddy. He wants there more money. <laughs> I think so, we need to give it to him. Uh, yeah, as you can see, the uh, the tiles do not like to come off the wall and that one uh, almost in the middle there has put up a real fight and snapped the corner off rather than let go. Do you know what's really actually. lovely about these spaces as well? And um, humour me, even if you don't agree, guys. <laughs> um, you know, when we see these little kind of snapshots of this, these amazing time capsule uh, tiles with the amazing colour, 
Um, but then around it, you've got the, the kind of really crumbling, dusty areas. It just oozes disused and secret and hidden to me. So I know that you can get these lovely areas of tiles, um, you know, at platform ground level in the stations, which, which are equally as lovely. But then there's something once you descend into these areas and you go behind that closed door that you just immediately know you're in one of these lovely kind of abandoned areas. Does that I, make sense? I'm, I'm yes. really with you, Laura. I, I love the juxtaposition of this kind of grotty, grainy, functional <laughs> space with tools and materials. And then you've got these really quite classy things it's like kind of a stately home that's you know fallen on bad times yes. you can still see yeah. the class shining through here and there okay. and i know exactly what you mean yeah it's lovely. like the it's like the old garage in a stately home isn't it really it's like they <laughs> even bothered to tile the garage yes. or, or indeed the bathroom amazing. yeah it's absolutely amazing you can almost imagine an old volvo being pulled up in there to have a service <laughs> done on it it's absolutely uh, lovely um and, and every picture that you've shown us so far, I mean, look at this. And what That's really- That's a perfect shot of what I was trying to describe, actually. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. What, what you've got over there, the tools. Laura, you, just out of shot, Laura, you've got your old lawnmower on the right, <laughs> and you've got a massive extension lead hanging up on a bent nail on the left. That's what you're saying, isn't it? You'd and never the get freezer, license yeah. for that. Yeah. Her chest freezer is just out there out of sight as well. <laughs> I love it. And of course, that, those colours on the wall, Chris, we, we noticed that as, around those tiles, that we go from sort of like an, a whitey colour to like a yellowy colour. Now that colour is quite familiar from other stations that we've been to, isn't it? Yeah, our, our spider senses always start tingling when you see that yellow because we've seen it in so many stations where there's been a conversion for wartime use because that was a typical colour that was used in the, the 30s and 40s. Um, and there are a number of places in, in this area which have that, uh, that yellow paint on the wall. Interestingly, we talked about Second World War use in episode nine in, in season one. Um, where it was for civilian shelter in a different part of the station. And I don't believe, Sidney, that there's yellow paint down in that area, is there? Not that we've seen. No, not, not to that extent. But um, in this different area of the station, there is. There's this area, and just by the lift shafts themselves, yeah. um, we see more of it. And that pitch has taken probably about 15 feet away from the last one isn't it so this that's is part right, yeah. of this long corridor you in the previous picture you would have seen a door that's through to a kitchen and a shower room um and then if you move down a little bit more that was reconverted by the way and then down here is where you'd um did you say you'd enter the lift to go out to street level this side chris yeah we believe these were the the entrances into the lift here the, to the left and the right of center here uh and the lift shaft is is uh, sort of in the distance where that that light's shining from um, and then on the other side of that, uh, this would have been the way that you came out of the lift. Isn't mm. it interesting? The complete difference. And those old, the new bricks there, obviously just blocking up the passageway between the two lift exits. Yeah, that, that's part of the uh, equipment rooms. And actually, no, sorry, that's the, that's the uh, staff quarters for, uh, when, uh, for escalator projects uh, wow. that we use as our, our base. Um, and then... It's if, if you turn the camera from there uh, around 180 degrees, you'd be looking out into this lift shaft from that uh, sort of balcony that you can see halfway halfway up at there. And that was from, from the trip, because I have to say this was, I think it's fairly safe to say that um, regular viewers of this will know that Chris and I go on what were known as mandates. And this was um, one of our trips to a station really to gather stuff for the Hidden London Hangouts, but also to have a just blooming good nose round. And this in itself is impressive enough to stand at the bottom of a lift shaft and look up. But still to come on this episode, there is something which will blow your mind. And it is even more impressive than that, isn't it, Chris? Is. So this, just to be clear, is the lift shaft that led down to the Piccadilly line. Uh, and this is one that you can see on our physical tour of, of Piccadilly Circus. Um, and then that, that light that's shining uh, from the, the aperture is the bit that um, breaks out uh, into the Bakerloo line passageways for ventilation. 
I love it. I love it. Laura, tell me, um, does that colour of tile beat Aldwych, which is currently your favourite? Struggling a little bit with the answer to that question. Um, it, oh, it's, it's a tricky one. See, they, the they're, blue, both, they're both lovely because I love those blues and greens, but the, the teal might, <laughs> the tealy tile might still just have it. But only, I love only it. marginally. But was that the previous photo? Is that one that you or Chris took from one of your from your site visit there? Uh, no, that was one that was uh, actually taken when we uh, City was there taking photos for the book. Ah, because I was oh, not. I, I was just going to say it was an amazing photo, and I didn't know whether you'd managed to get that on your phone. Um, <laughs> <and> just. <laughs> Your photographic yeah, skills were phenomenal. Unfortunately, so. no, it, it was a Bless professional photographer. <laughs> Chris Something and I have got a very open friendship, but we're not yet at the point where we're sharing camera roles. I can tell you that's a long way <laughs> down the road. But uh, but no, it's it's just from what you've seen so far, this is this is a, a new and exciting bit of this station that we've never been to before. We just wanted to show you, you know, episode one. We're all needing a bit of a cheer up because this is just rubbish this lockdown situation and if we can help you get through it and you can help us get through the next lockdown then we're doing a pretty good job and we've got some really cool stuff to come now as promised this is the bit where it all gets exciting because so far it's been lovely photographs love 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 you all love them we all love them it's fantastic but of course the difference between series one and series two is we started getting video out of this and series three is no different we are trying to up the ante with every series we do and this one is going to be properly exciting isn't it Chris because this is where it all gets a little bit spine tingling yeah so what we're going to do is we're going to start in that lift shaft uh the Baker Lou line lift shaft uh which no longer has lift in it um and in the bottom of it it has this thing now I know that we've all been uh, on tour at Down Street, uh, and I'm sure many people uh, watching will have will have watched the Down Street episode and may think that that object looks a bit familiar. Uh, four bolts on top of it, big piece of concrete. What do we think that was for? Anybody? First of the series. Playing anybody? along at home, anybody? It's got to well, be a proper bit. It's got to get bulky kit, hasn't it, really? And I suppose the clue might be in what these disused lift shafts turn into, isn't it? Yes, it is. And it is the base plinth for a fan to be fitted, a very large fan to power ventilation. A big fan. A big fan. Fan. Enormous fan. Almost as big as some of our fans, yeah. Uh, <laughs> And my guess is it would have been a centrifugal fan like the one at, uh, at Down Street. Um, and yeah, there, there aren't all that many of those that get fitted. Uh, and they tend to be ones which are uh, powering ducted air rather than just a big radial fan blasting the air up the uh, lift, lift shaft. So keep an eye out for this because I think there's another part of that ventilation system that we're going to see as we carry on our journey. Now, just to the right of that, there is a ladder. Which we love leads ladders. Up, oh, we love ladders. Which leads up through a small aperture in a concrete uh, floor in the lift shaft. Again, we've come across concrete lift shafts before, haven't we? At mm. which, other, which other sites, anybody? At least anybody? two. Anybody? <laughs> Well, we've... Fact, everybody's doing this now. This is genius. <laughs> we, uh, well, you may remember uh, it was in last season, um, and uh, it was the day. It was the episode where I had the dreaded virus, wasn't it, Brompton yes. Road? And the tile was beautiful. The tile work was beautiful. It was a station with not one light bulb working. It <laughs> was Laura remembers Laura the Explorer. <laughs> I oh, know the uh, the late night urban exploring with Mr. Nix. He was it was phenomenal. <laughs> Brompton so, Road, wasn't it? Yes, yeah, so Brompton Road, and of course, I'm imagining people typing furiously in the uh, chat below. Uh, uh, Down Street as well, of course, uh, yeah. had a concrete yeah. concrete cap in it too. So heading up that ladder leads you to this. Um, now let's just pause and take that in for a moment. Um, We've got another ladder leading up to another passageway. It's like a crystal maze, isn't it? <laughs> it is. 
if you if you get out, then you get to keep the crystal. Uh, Just the, the saw version. What you need, actually, in any crystal maze is you need somebody with you who's got a shaven head. It's just as well I was with Chris Nix. <laughs> I'm right on it. Um, so I just need to be wearing a bit of leopard print, perhaps. Maybe next, uh, next season. I'm sure you could. I'm I've got sure some leopard print maquette. I'll have to, have to try that next time. So, um, yeah. Very scratchy. Uh, I've just um, I've just zoomed in here because uh, that's a piece of duct air duct coming up through the floor from below, almost the kind of air duct that might have been fitted to the fan that was now missing off that plinth. Right. Um, however, this area has been modified a lot, uh, and you can see this passageway uh, off to the left here, up the ladder, is all done in very rough cast concrete, uh, and I think we should go and have have another explore. Um, this is making me very there. excited. What I'm basically excited about the leopard print waistcoat that Chris is going to make out of moquette. <laughs> <laughs> and that there'll be it's... like all of his cats hanging off it with their claws <laughs> yes. in it. Be scratching it's, him. it's not it's not cut and loop, so they wouldn't be that interested. Trust me, I bought a I bought a seating cube of it, and uh, they haven't touched it because it hasn't got the loops. Uh, I love it. Samantha's, don't squash um... our dreams, Chris. <laughs> Even the phraseology makes me laugh. I can't believe that we're having such comedy about <laughs> bus and tube seat fabric. It's all gone a little bit mad. Right. All shall we... Uh, shall we... <laughs> OK, so it's time for Alex and I to go into the space I've been teasing him with for an entire year at Piccadilly Circus. So just... Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. wow. Yeah, actually, it was a was a lift shaft, is now an airport's ventilation shaft, inhaling and exhaling air from the London underground system, and it's right on the Piccadilly. And if you just have a moment to take in the silence, you can't believe you're in central London, because it's just, it's so big, it's so cavernous, and it's so quiet, and also so dark. You take the light away, I can't even do this if you turn the lights on. It is so, so dark. What's amazing as well is if you look at this, you can see it on the wall where the, uh, where the rough wooden shuttering uh, created its pattern in the concrete when it was made. And if we listen really carefully up there, you might just hear the sounds of Piccadilly above. Do you know, I, all through that, I was captivated by the film, but what I was really more captivated by was <laughs> you in the top corner, faffing around with your, with your moquette book. It, it's because I fear that I should transform myself into <laughs> Richard O'Brien oh, for you. Genius. <laughs> that's oh, my lovely. new favourite moquette. That's you know, that's got some sort of ab fab vibes to it, Chris, I think. I, do you think I could pull off a uh, leopard print yes. moquette cravat? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> oh, it there gets we go. Worse. The Crystal Every Maze series. edition. <laughs> uh, that is honestly, Chris, I, we, we love you. We salute you and we love you. Even that moquette. Where do you get this stuff from? I've got no <laughs> idea. Um, loads of things in there. First of all, I was completely freaked out by the darkness of that law. It is really dark and really echoey. Do you know what um, really struck me, actually? And you said it in the, in the clip as well that it was so quiet. And I think what's unusual about these spaces is you are just kind of, you're so close to something in central London, uh, you know, below the street, next to the platform, uh, by, you know, a passageway or a corridor, but you, you are struck by just moments of absolute tranquility and silence. And it's just, your brain can't quite kind of uh, make that make sense in a way. And what I love about that clip, what I, I love about that clip is the, the, the texture and the, um, and the quietness, but then you've got the echo um, and the darkness to go with it. And so all of those senses like molded in, I mean, oh, it's phenomenal guys. That was, that was a really good clip, enjoyed that. There's an interesting thing actually, if you ever get a chance to watch it, and Chris knows I bang on about this documentary so many times, there's an episode called Heart of the Angel. 
uh, which is a 40 minutes BBC programme. It's on YouTube. And there's a bit where you're talking to one of the fluffers who goes down and cleans, or at the time, clean the tunnels. And she had a brush and a bag and she'd clean out all the human hair and all the litter uh, and all the bugs that goes into uh, the tunnel. But she used to talk just about- Can you imagine like when you have to clean like your shower drain time <laughs> and <laughs> <a million>. very, <laughs> very similar, Sidney. Thank you very much for that deeply vivid description there. <laughs> <laughs> terrifyingly vivid not quite sure what goes on in that sink plug but there we are but what she said was there was this amazing moment where she said about being totally on your own in the tube tunnel and there's only as she, as she said at the time there's only you and god down there and you think i felt a bit like that in piccadilly circus because chris was just like what do you make of this it's huge and it's in an old lift shaft and you think this is an unbelievable piece of um, sort of, of mechanical engineering. And as Chris hinted, and Chris will talk to us about it, they, they made it out of massive lumps of wood and poured concrete, didn't they, Chris? They, they did. And I have to say that the, the, the reaction shot of Alex there was entirely genuine. I, I insisted that he didn't go into that space until I'd set up the cameras uh, and got rolling. Um, so, so just so that we could capture that moment of how affecting it is to go into that that space. And yeah, just um, uh, even those walls have, although they're rough cast, they are cast, cast against uh, wooden boards. And those wooden oh, boards really? leave these traces of wood grain. I uh, really like so those. They have their own beauty. Yeah. They are remarkable. And bearing in mind that this is, this is set in concrete and the wood, um, grain just, if you like comes it's through just, yeah it's just imprinted into the concrete basically it's incredible it's just another level of of amazing detail that these locations get by pure accident and you know and we are so lucky to be able to go in there and we're so lucky to be able to convey that to you through these hangouts because genuinely there is no way in the world any member of the public could go in there it's just it's too dangerous there's too many bits and bobs hanging around it's too dark um, it's too. It's it, it. It could probably even freak people out. I'd imagine, Chris, wouldn't you say? I would say so. I, I would. Yeah, I'm highly selective about the the people that uh, have taken in there because, as you say, the last thing you want is to take somebody in there and have them, uh, you know, unable to get back out again because they 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 find the space so challenging. First time I went in there, it was you know had the same effect on on me yeah. and the city too. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I like how you, you pointed to the side as if I was just there by your it's, side. It's it's the risk of running multiple screens, you see. You are to my <laughs> side. <laughs> it's it's like, like, yeah, yeah. I thought there was a little bit of cabin crew coming in there. It's like your nearest next <laughs> behind you. My yeah. nearest yeah. colleagues are to my left and right. But I've got, I'll tell you something. I've got you to thank, actually, Chris, for, for me overcoming my fear of the dark, because I never told you at the time, and when Chris started taking me in these tube stations, I was terrified of the dark. Heights and open spaces... But you, when you're with someone who you trust, you think to yourself, oh, this would be okay, actually. And there are a couple of times when we go to particular locations and Chris will go, are you sure about this? And it's like, yeah, okay, yeah, I'm with you. This is all right. So thank you very much. This is amazing. And so what do we think then, team? Was that a reasonable um, place for series three, episode one? I think so. And I think there's so many more amazing places to go. I mean, Chris, this is the first of what we hope is going to be quite a cool series of bits and pieces, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, what, what we've, uh, I think what we've done in the first two series is build up and, uh, you know, cover the, the, the ground of those tours that we, uh, we already could, could let people go on. Um, we've gone a little bit more in depth with season two and really with season three, we're digging that a little bit further. So if you enjoy tunnel grubbing uh, and uh, seeing properly behind the scenes into places that are very hard to get to, then here we are, season three. <laughs> Did you say tunnel grubbing? Oh, tunnel grubbing, like yes. Grubbing or rubbing? Grubbing. Right. I don't think <laughs> tunnel, think grubbing. tunnel rubbing could well be an arrestable offence. It's probably why he's dressed like that for court, I think. <laughs> it's tunnel what, rubbing sorry. sounds like it would hurt quite a bit. Uh, tunnel <laughs> grubbing is the, the term that we've used with our patrons for when we're going into oh. properly dirty, grimy areas, which, uh, you know. Um, to be uh, fair, it's, I'm so it's, bored it's with lockdown, I'd quite happy to give a go to uh, tunnel rubbing. <laughs> If you could only find a tunnel to rub. 
Exactly. Uh, now for the travel. Um, thank you very much, as always, for that beautiful canter around a brand new location and one that sadly will never be on a public tour because we just can't organise it. But all brilliant. And um, so do stick with us for series three. And if you haven't seen any of the other episodes, don't forget, series uh, one, episode nine is the original Piccadilly Circus episode. So that will show you the other half of the station that we didn't show you today. There's no point in doing it twice. But um, this is all quite cool. But there's also two full series worth of stuff that you can watch as and when you want to during this chaotic, ridiculous lockdown that we're all bored rigid with. Um, notes, queries and questions, as always in every one of our episodes, is a thing. And we've had some seriously beautiful uh, notes and letters come in. Um, Sandra said, uh, I just watched the Hoban episode. Uh, I love the recent one. I used to travel from Finsbury Park to Aldwych in the 80s when I worked at Bush House. It's utterly fascinating. Um, what other sorts of places are we going to go to? We're keeping it a little bit secret for now because a lot of it's due to access and some of it's due to the fact we just want to keep it a little bit secret from you. But there's one particular episode which is going to knock your socks off. It is already in the can. We know we can do this. It is so, so beautiful. Um, Aisha, here's one for you, uh, said, um, I've introduced um, your Hidden London Hangouts to my granddad. Um, he loved the Hoban episode. The tunnels reminded him of the one he worked on around Hoban that was a repeater station and some op offices. He said the episode was brilliantly made and he sat quite engrossed for the whole episode. His name is Alan Knight. And Aww. reminds me of our very first mandate, doesn't it, Chris, walking around Hoban? Yes, Hoban, uh, Hoban does have some interesting stuff around there. I'm, I'm taking a guess as to where uh, Mr. Knight might have been based, uh, mm. not very far mm. from there. Yeah. Yeah, I was did watching you, your face as I said that. Did you guys go to Pizza Express that night? We did. Uh, we, we, yeah, did we did Prosecco and pizza. But, but the, one, the one in Hoban, yeah. Without, it was indeed. without us again, maybe? Well, well yeah. I mean, that was the, to be fair, that was first date night. I wasn't going to bring a girl <laughs> along to that. Um, <laughs> then, uh, we've got one from Five Jamer. He says, Alex, would you please one day do a programme about the former Metropolitan Railway Station called Lords? Chris, it's like he's read our mind. It really it is. is, yes. I, I, we must check in case our phones are being tapped. <laughs> exactly, yeah. We, we were talking about BT, yeah, yeah. BT repeater station. Um, Laurie, you're going to love this one, being Mummy Ooh. Christmas. Drew118 says, um, I missed the first series because of the pregnancy of my child. So caught up in the early days of the birth, I sat the best, I had my best memories of sitting on the sofa with my two week old son, binge watching series one, series two was awesome as I managed to watch most of them live. The importance of Hidden London Hangouts cannot be underestimated and I can't wait to introduce my young boy, Ethan, to London, Laura. Oh, that, do you know what? That really warms my heart. Both my kids, I was pregnant over both Christmases with my kids. And so whenever it comes to Christmas, I always have that memory. And I think that's why I like Christmas so much as well. But I totally agree that you need things to binge watch when they're little. So I'm glad that this is the proving kind of worthy of, of that time and that special time. And um, I look forward to Ethan watching them too. Fabulous. And uh, Long Branch Mike. Now, here's one. I do love these ones that get right to the nub of the issue. Uh, Long Branch Mike says, Chris, you look brilliant with a beard. Oh, um, oh Laura, thank you. Your oh. Hair is, yeah, Laurie, your hair is lovely. Oh. And Sidney and Alex, you always look on fine form. Sid. Oh, this is a nice fan. Well, I like this. Exactly. Like this. Thank you, Mike. Keep the videos coming. <laughs> Alexis Amber says, um, as we wrap up 2020, I can certainly say that Hidden London Hangouts is one of the best things to come out of this year. Just wanted to pass along a small token of my appreciation to you and the Hidden London Hangouts team, especially in a time when I can't travel to London. Had to cancel my London trip in November with my mum for obvious reasons. Hidden London Hangouts has made me feel like I'm there, even though I'm in Phoenix, Arizona. Oh. Wow. So thankful for the work you and the team do. The four of you have brought the joy to many, many um, of my uh, days. And what else have we got? Paul Giffen, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year team. I've subscribed to your YouTube channel and watch a, a load of the episodes. This is the best thing I've done this year. Uh, what a wow. great bunch of people you are. Love the London Underground. I've been purchasing vintage, vintage items recently. Uh, on your light boxes, you have things like Hidden London showing. Can I purchase them anywhere? As I've only got a few that have come with it. Chris, this is a long, long debate, isn't it? It is. This is a T TFL product, that, not a uh, museum one. So the ones that we have done here, especially for, for broadcast and for the series. So sadly, no. Uh, sadly the... not. But yeah. you know, what you do in the privacy of your own home is your own business. Um, <laughs> Dave Stick says, uh, Happy New Year to you and May 2021 for all you wish it for. Well, so far, 
not delivering, but we're doing our best. I'm a carer for my wife who's got cancer and we've been shielding since March. So doubt we'll ever get to London again, uh, which we used to visit all the time. So I absolutely love Hidden London and very much appreciate and love you all for bringing it to me via these programmes. Please keep up to date with the making of these uh, TV shows. What channel will it be on and when? Siddy, where are you going to be on telly? Oh, yes. Oh, so we're doing a, a six part documentary series with Ye uh, which will be airing on yesterday. Um, we don't have any dates yet. We're hoping we'll, we'll be able to uh, broadcast it later on this year. We're due to start filming later on this month, but with the current lockdown restrictions, um, it's a bit of a question mark. But I cannot wait to share um, the amazing sights and what we're going to do on, on the series with you. It's going to be a wild ride. Fabulous. And Chris Nix, I'm told that you're about to get quite big down below, down under. Oh, yes, of course. The um, uh, the the series of uh, uh, Architecture of the Railways is airing in uh, in uh, Australia at the moment. So City's mm -hmm. already uh, appeared and gone down uh, very well, I understand. Uh, and I should be appearing in a, in a few weeks time. Whew. Good work. Uh, Jack Pittman says, um, I've got to show you this. This is my lockdown project from uh, episode and series two. Chris, show me a photo fast. Look at this beauty. Wow, that's amazing. That's a whopper. <laughs> and that's made well, out of razors and everything. The amount of work involved in yeah. not only producing the, the bullseye, but also doing all of that ribbon. Uh, the ribbons above and below the the letters uh incredible yeah. work. <laughs> that is awesome isn't it well but done also well like done. so well spaced out it's like if i try to do something like that, it's like if i tried to write like happy birthday on like a card i just cannot for the life of me space them out correctly so i'll do like a giant h-a-p and then the tiny little p and y you know what I mean. <laughs> I, I feel quite spaced out at the moment, actually, but uh, I, thank I, you very much indeed. I think you know what Edward is. Johnson himself would give uh, an A, a for effort on that one. Yeah. I, mean, I think yeah. we've gone far enough without any need for a Johnson gag, to be fair, but there we are. And uh, finally, Chris, here's a little test for you. Right? Okay, this is something that TFL's Instagram site kicked off yesterday, and it's all gone a little bit sort of postal, really. And um, this moquette, yeah. what's it from? Uh, it's from a bus. <laughs> Which one? A bus. <laughs> well, that, it, they, they've been used on a, a number of buses. That, that's why they, I say a bus, not a specific one. You're fabulous, because me included, I got this wrong. I said it was the new route master. Uh, and it's no, actually no. the new era. alternative bus for London. Apparently, it is, according to all the moquette, um, this is the new route, this is... It isn't the new route master. It is in fact the moquette from the new bus for London, otherwise known as the Enviro 400H City. Oh, how could it's you all... not guess that? I mean, so, really, schoolboy rookie error. I, I love that on, you're Chris. putting me on the on the podium for that one. You really haven't forgiven me for the Edward Johnston quiz in Uruguay, <laughs> have you? <laughs> Take till series five for that one, Chris. Um, I'm glad I so, swerved it. <laughs> yeah, apparently it's also found on the Enviro 200 MMC, essentially the single deck variant of the 400. 400H City takes elements from the new route master, such as glazed staircase and wraparound upper deck window to make for a unique bus in London. Well, we thank you very much for your counsel on that one. I am you, completely I've lost say, now. Alex, you know, I, I love you. I do have it. So I love you. <laughs> no. I absolutely, we all love him, honestly, from leopard prints to new bus for London in one fell swoop. That folder is amazing. I've got to say, I think the uh, leopard print makes a better cravat than the... Uh... Do you know, yeah. you're giving me ideas now. You, we could make you, a, for, for next Christmas, a forget frame bits of moquette, I'll make you a jumper. That'd be, Ooh, be really, it, wouldn't it be a bit pretty scratchy? I don't know. You'd want to line it, put it that way. I love that. <laughs> you need a vest. Like Laura. your mask. Ooh, let's Laura. make him a waistcoat. I, what, one of our one of our patrons does actually have a couple of uh, maquette waistcoats. He's got a route master and I think a new route master. Oh, very nice. We've got um, we've got not. viewers. Marilyn, one of our regular viewers, is um, she's made belts out of maquette as well, hasn't she? Yeah, so, that's and, on her Insta. You know, yeah, there's a lot of it. So, um, well, listen, thank you very much as always for um, your amazing amounts of um, 
mail, if you like. Uh, Podgy Asthmatic, we still haven't managed to get to the museum to open your Christmas present. I promise you will. We'll do it. We'll find a way of doing it. I'm not sure how, but we'll find a way of doing it. Um, Laura, thank you so much, as always, and Happy New Year, and keep your chin up. You're a great mum, and it's all going to be fine, because I'm going to teach the kids geography. Oh, thank you, Alex. Happy New Year to you too. I don't think I said that at the beginning. And Happy New Year to everyone out there, wherever you are in the world watching these. Um, and I just wanted to say that I had a little goosebump moment when, um, Alex, you were reading those uh, messages out from people, from the people shielding who can't go out, to the people uh, like myself who are trying to homeschool, uh, from people that can't go out to work or travel into London. Like Everybody's got their own um, kind of difficulties and things that are really tricky at the moment. So I'm, I'm glad that these hangouts can help. I mean, that's amazing. We never thought that would happen, would we guys? Um, yeah. And just one more thing quickly, two things, sorry. One more thing before we go. Um, Chris mentioned the um, Hidden London book. Oh, sorry, I just knocked that in. Uh, the Hidden London book and the chapter that Siddy wrote on Piccadilly. Um, and there's a picture in it, the Douglas McPherson stomach diagram from 1928. And it's one of my all time favorite diagrams. I'm convinced we would have put it in the season one episode, but it's in the chapter that, that Siddy wrote in the book. And no. I think that um, we use it on the tour as well. Um, and it just, it just struck me then when Chris was talking about the book, because um, take a look at that guys, because it's, it's amazing. It's like, it's simplistic complexity. And it just, it just um, epitomizes Piccadilly and that whole engineering kind of section. Um, and my brain deals well with that cross section so I can actually see it all laid out. Um, but take a look at that. It's awesome. And it's in the chapter that Siddy wrote in the book. Absolutely love it. Siddy Holloway, as always, we love you and happy new year. And um, let's get through this madness together. Happy New Year. I'm so glad I've got all of you guys. We've got something to look forward to every week. It's, you know, it's tough times ahead, but at least now we're starting to, you know, see a light at the end of the tunnel. So thank you so much and uh, see you next week. Thank you. And um, Chris Nix, what will he wear next week? Who knows? Keep going to keep it a mystery. But yeah, Happy New Year to everybody out there. And uh, thanks to you, uh, my uh, fellow uh, presenters on this, and to everybody out there for joining us for another go round with this one. It's been fun and uh, looking forward to this year. I was thinking maybe you could dress as Borat. <laughs> I'll leave that to you, mate. I think you've got the mankini for it. It doesn't fit anymore. When you see <laughs> series one, episode nine, you'll see that I was not only younger looking, but also slimmer. That is the joy of lockdown. Uh, dry January, you can just get lost, frankly, because it's not happening. Um, if you want to follow us on Instagram, and I urge you, if you've not had the chance, download the app and find us. You've got Chris Nix, you've got City Holloway, you've got Hidden London Law, and you've got me, Alex Grums, and also tip a wink to uh, at LT Museum as well. You found us on YouTube because you're watching us, but also don't forget down below, like us, subscribe, and also comment. And if you've got a particular question about the tube or anything that you think you'd like to, us to cover in a subsequent episode, then just drop us a note. We'd love to hear from you. We read them all and uh, we spread them all on our little WhatsApp group and decide which ones we're gonna read out. So thank you very much. And in the meantime, have yourself a great day and stay safe.